We've shown you sort of life-threatening cold this evening, because I say Mac would have died if we'd left him there for an hour in a temperature like that. And there are very, very few people in the world who have faced these sorts of extremely low temperatures for any length of time and have survived. And one of them is indeed with us tonight, and that's Jamie Andrew, and I'd like to welcome him back. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Um, so, Jamie, you were stranded for six nights, no tent. No tents, no. Uh, I mean, if we, if we knew we were going to be at that long, we'd have taken a tent, <laughs> but, but we didn't. So we made do with what we had, and we did have good gear. We had um, down jackets, we had okay. windproofs, you know, we had bivvy bags and sleeping bags. And anything else you could do to, to try and stay warm between you? Well, of course, we tried to huddle together okay. and stay, stay warm that way. Well, and, and huddling together is important. It sounds like it's just there for comfort, but it's not, and it's a very simple way to show this, um, if we've got the camera just there. If you take an orange like this and you look at the area that each one's got, if you just let the oranges huddle together like that, you've lost one surface from which you can radiate, convect, and conduct. So huddling together does indeed save your life at times like this. But presumably, all of the other things we've talked about kicked in too. I mean, you presumably shivered. Yeah, I mean, of course we shivered, but, but, but before long you start to run out of energy and you, you can't shiver. And the shivering stops. Yeah, the shivering stops. And, and, and you mm. know, th then we really started to go downhill, I suppose. Okay, and, and you noticed that your, presumably your skin was shutting down and getting cold. Yeah, it did. In fact, it varied. It would go cold and then sometimes it would warm up again and, and it, was, it was strange that way. Well, which is an interesting thing. We were actually talking about this earlier on because he was aware of a phenomenon that actually occurs. When your vessels shut down, they don't shut down permanently because if they did, all the tissue would die. So what happens is every few minutes, they reflexly open up again just to let another pulse of hot oxidated blood back into your fingers. So that kept your fingers and toes alive for a while, but presumably after six days, things weren't going to work out for you? No, they, they, they eventually started to freeze until eventually... What, freeze solid? Freeze solid. You know, I was, I was clinking my hands together like pieces of porcelain. It, it was, they were frozen solid. Frozen solid. Yeah. Well, and that's really, that's quite so frostbite. Now, we've got an, a sort of rather unpleasant photograph, I think, which Dave will show us there. Um, when hands are frozen or feet are frozen, the tissue dies because it's frozen solid. The cells burst, and what happens is they warm up you wait for this sort of area of demarcation. I think that's what you had there, wasn't it? Someone's done a very good job with your, yep, that's your limbs. But you've come through, you're back to climbing. Oh, yeah, I, I, I haven't let it stop me. I, I certainly carried on climbing. This, well, this is my, um, one of my climbing ice axes. Fantastic. And there's Jamie doing a gully that I certainly wouldn't want to climb as well, and running triathlons and all sorts of other things. I keep well. myself busy, yeah. Well, Jamie, thank you so much indeed. I mean, a true thank survivor and a, and a real inspiration, I think. Jamie, thank you very much. <laughs>